I greet you all in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and welcome you those who are sitting here and those who are watching online hang on there I'm sure you'll be blessed with this word of God amen, amen. and uh, as I said we are started the series of a God-centered family and it is a very very important whatever you have in your life if you are not this kind of a family I doubt how much you can call yourself a successful family or a successful wife husband and children amen so this is the core of a Christian life and this is a core of a Christian believing family and this morning episode 4 we are starting God's design for marriage amen hallelujah can you all say that God's, God's design, design for, for marriage. marriage in this I might take two three uh, uh, two three sessions because it is so important it is so important for you to have that all right so keep this in mind keep time in mind I wanted to go as much uh, fast as possible at the same time I want to explain to you where it is really required because we got to understand a lot of uh, uh, theology and terminology and certain Greek and Hebrew words I may not talk all those things but whatever is required I'll do and we'll go ahead with that amen, amen. all good all right and one more time, I greet all the viewers who are watching this. Hang on, and you see the blessing of God. And before I start my message, I just wanted to appeal to everyone because these topics are so powerful, and at the time, it is so much speaking to your lives. With all my respect, with all my humility and humbleness and whatever you call it, we are preaching these words loving people amen hallelujah and we love the conditions we are living in we love these countries we love the culture we love the circumstances of the people with all this keeping in mind my job is to preach the word of god amen, amen. as it is because you only the word of god can change people the word of god can change countries the word of god can change the culture Word will change the culture. Culture should never change the word of God. Amen. So keeping this is the heart of the preacher. And with all the respect, due reverence and everything, we love you. And we believe this word will speak to you as you are. Amen. With this, let me go to the uh, 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 book of uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. Can somebody read for me? Book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. And God blessed them, and God said to them, mm. Be fruitful and multiply, mm. and replenish the earth, mm. and subdue it. Amen. People of God, one more appeal from my side is that, because I am speaking in English, you may understand the language, but you may not understand the message. Amen. Understanding language not, not necessarily mean that we understand the meaning of the uh, 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 preaching. So, I especially appeal to everybody, listen to this word carefully, not just the language you understand, but understand the heart of God about these messages. And I'm telling you, these messages are very, very, very important and awesome for us. Amen. We are seeing here, uh, you can read uh, 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 Genesis chapter uh, 2 verses 18. To 25 what are they 21 22 23 24 please and the lord caused a deep sleep to fall on adam and he slept and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place mm. then the rib which the lord god had taken from man mm. he made into a woman mm. and he brought her to the man mm. and adam said this is now bone of my bones mm. and flesh of my flesh mm. she shall be called woman mm. because she was taken out of man Amen. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. We are talking about the marriage, and I want you to read verse 23 and 24, please. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Amen. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife they shall become one flesh beautiful people of God we are talking about marriage and as I said I am going to do probably two or three weeks on this and I want everybody attention here and for 
Today's meditation, I want to speak to you three things. For today's meditation, I wanted to speak to you three things. One is, marriage is God's mystery. Amen. Hallelujah. You got to understand, marriage is God's mystery. I don't want to get into the details of marriage, but because I'm going to take a few more uh, 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 sessions, I come details, but marriage is a crisis in the society today because we don't understand the marriage the way God wants to understand it. You know why I said God wants us to understand? Because marriage is not proposed by anybody. Marriage is only proposed by God, uh, 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 can, uh, uh, conducted by God, ordained by God, instituted by God. So unless you don't know what is the mind of God, you never be a successful in your marriage. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's the reason I said when it comes to marriage, you got to understand the mind of God because marriage initiated out of the mind of God. Am I clear? All right. Now, marriage makes one a husband or a wife. Without marriage, there is no husband, there is no wife, we are going to see that. And marriage is a natural law. These three topics I am going to cover as quickly and as uh, 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 useful to us as possible this morning. Okay. First we are going to say marriage is God's mystery. What is a mystery? Mystery is always, we believe it is something not revealing to us, isn't it? That's what we call the mystery. It's otherwise called a secret. Secret is that which is not revealed to you or which is not understood by you or seen by you. All right. I just want you to go one quotation with this so that uh, uh, we can uh, see this. Before that, I just wanted to show you what is not marriage. Okay. It is more of a teaching and preaching this morning. I wanted to teach more of the things because teaching knowledge will empower us. Bible tells me my people perish not because they don't have money. My people perish because they lack knowledge. So this time we are imparting knowledge to the viewers this morning. What is not marriage? We see first, then we'll see what is marriage. Marriage is not a cultural or a social or a traditional or a regional event as man designed in the course of time and established a humanistic approach. It's a big uh, long sentence, is it? Marriage is not a cultural event. Marriage is not a traditional event. Marriage is not a social event. Uh, marriage is not a, a, a regional event. What do you mean? This all yes. But marriage is beyond that. We think it's a cultural event. A boy, a girl come to age, get them married. Yes, it is. But that's not what all marriage is. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. And marriage is not about husband and wife adjusting one another and live under a life of survival. Isn't it? This is another concept of marriage. We adjust one another, live under a roof and do what is required. Isn't it? That's not marriage. Yes, it is. But understand the meaning what I'm talking. And marriage is not for a, a, a to maintain a socio-economic stability and to live under one roof as aliens. Am I sounding good? Marriage is not a socio-economic stability. What is it? My son has come to the marriage uh, age and my daughter has come to the marriage because if I don't make them uh, uh, get married, my society will underestimate or uh, whatever. You know, socio-economic. Otherwise, a rich family boy, a rich family girl, economy, status, society. That's not marriage. That's what marriages fail. Yes, it is marriage, but I'm talking beyond that. Please understand what I'm trying to say. So marriage is not all that. Marriage is not a, a socio-economic stability to live under one roof as aliens. Hey, you are there? I am here. I live my life, you live my life. No, that's not marriage. All right. And what is, now we'll see, what is marriage? Marriage is a call toward companionship. What is marriage? Companionship. If you don't have the habit of companionship, you're still not into the marriage. It doesn't matter how many years you live. You may live 20 years, 30 years, 50 years, doesn't matter. 
as long as you don't develop a companionship between the uh, 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 spouses of male and female and the wife and the husband, that's not a marriage. And marriage is a call to be in deep and intimate relationship, longing for one another for the rest of the lives. Isn't making it sense? Marriage is getting into the intimate and deep relationship and say, I can't live without you. I read somewhere, don't live a person with what you can live with her and live with a person whom you cannot live without her. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I right? Many times we live with a person because I can live with her. No, no, no. You live with a person, I cannot live without her. In many cases, I think in my life is like that. I cannot operate without my wife in many areas of my life. Isn't it? It's not something we talk about, but these are habits you develop. Amen? An intimate relationship. An intimate relationship that can take you. And marriage is a divine institution sealed with the constitution of God. Because the constitution of man is entering into the marriage, marriages are failing. Marriage constitution is ordained by God, designed by God, created by God, aimed to make a successful couple. That's if you bring, unless you bring the constitution of God into your marriage, your marriage can never be a success. Maybe in the, in the temporal, as I said, you live there, I live there under one roof as aliens. That's okay. We are not talking about that kind of marriage. We are talking about a marriage that can have a companionship. We are talking about a marriage uh, uh, that can uh, uh, develop an intimate relationship. And we are talking a marriage that can develop a fellowship. Amen? Companionship, intimacy, and the fellowship makes the marriage of God's constitution. Amen? Praise be to God. And uh, marriage is an intimate relationship doesn't mean it's a sexual relationship. A marriage ends up in sexual relationship, but a marriage cannot end up. A marriage cannot end in fellowship or companionship or a deep relationship. Amen. Hallelujah. So when you say marriage, yes, it goes with a sexual attraction and the sexual fulfillment, but that's not the marriage, and marriage is beyond that. Intimate relationship, all right? A companionship and a deep relationship makes the marriage, and that's a constitution of God, not the constitution of man. All right? What we are seeing, God created marriage as an example of the relationship between Jesus and his church. This is the most important thing for you to understand marriage. Can you say on amen? Mm -hmm. Marriage, we, we, are, we are seeing a topic called marriage is God's mystery. What is mystery? We just saw what is not marriage. And what is marriage? We saw that. But why we saw these two things? Because you got to understand God's mystery. There is a mystery. Okay? There is a mystery of God which you got to understand. Can you read with me to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 32? The great, this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. What is a mystery? In the mystery is for you to understand the marriage relationship, you got to understand the relationship between the Christ and the church. If you understand the relation between the Christ and the church, you understand the relation between you and your wife. That is the constitution of God. Isn't it? Have you seen any time like this? Marriage? And it's a mystery. Bible tells, I gave three different uh, uh, versions. One it says, great, marriage is a great mystery. Marriage is an astounding mystery. Marriage is a profound mystery. And marriage is something always talks about the Christ and the church. People of God, I want to talk about the mystery. If you see in the Bible, let me go very quickly. There's no better dish than the days 
that you and me are living today. Amen? Hallelujah. Can you challenge that? Because if you see first three centuries or the fourth centuries, there is no Bible for believers. There are only a few letters. They, 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 they got the letters from Paul, or they got the letters from Peter, uh, you know, all that person. They don't have a Bible based like what you and me have a believing Bible. They don't have this book those days. And from 5th century to 15th century, the Bible was bound for different reasons in Vatican. So, in other words, for 15 centuries, people don't have a book like that in their hands freely like what you and me are having. You've got to understand what I'm saying this. I know I'm taking time, but this will help you. But in the 15th century onwards, the Bible was brought out by the uh, 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 great uh, uh, Martin Luther. And after that, there's so many reformation and the true power of the word of God came to all the people. I can tell you from the late 18th century and from 18th century, 19th century and 20th century. There's so much of revival all around the world. And we got this book and we got so many commentaries and so much of knowledge on this. Why I tell you all this, what your forefathers don't have to understand what is marriage. You have to understand what is marriage and you are failing in your lives. Did you get me what I'm saying? Why I'm saying all these things? Though we have so much of knowledge available because we are going a man-made system, you are neglecting the system of God. Thereby, all the marriages are ending in failures and there's a rate of divorce is going away all over the world today. People of God, marriage to understand, you are going to understand the relationship between the church and the Christ. And now I want to show you the similarities the church and Christ and Adam and Eve. Amen. You know God oh Jesus. Our God is an omniscient God. Am I right? Can you can you believe that? Our God is omniscient. Ah, before I get into the uh, 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 this thing let me show you something we are talking about a mystery, right? The mystery in Latin word, you know what is called? The sacrament. Ephesians 5.32, if you read in a Latin Bible, the Bible tells me sacrament. Mystery means sacrament. You know what is sacrament? Sacrament is observing the word of God in the physical realm and seeing the results in the supernatural realm. Amen. That means the grace will appear to you to give the blessing. I'll give you an example. According to the, uh, according to the Protestant Bible, because you've got to be very careful in certain wording. That's what I'm using these words very carefully. According to the Protestant theology, we call three things are sacraments. One is baptism. The other one is communion. And the third one is marriage. Because I said third one, because we are talking about that. You know what is baptism? Baptism is, the Bible tells me, Paul tells me, he that joined with the Lord is one in the spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. He that joined with the Lord is one in the spirit. Please understand, I want to explain to you why only these three are sacraments, why Bible designated them as a, sac a sacraments. In other words, when you take, why we, why we uh, uh, ask people to take baptism, baptism allow you to become one with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. That means you are joining with the Lord through the baptism and you are becoming one with the Lord. That means baptism means oneness. Amen. Did you get me what I'm saying? Baptism means oneness. Oneness with whom? My Savior. Oh, hallelujah. Now take communion. Communion. We are going to take communion after some time. Communion is also act of coming together with the body and the blood of Christ and you become one. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what I say. These are all teachings. You got to understand the teachings of the word of God. So when the communion makes you one with the Lord. Amen. Those who eat my body and drink my blood, he is one with me. Hallelujah. The same wavelength, I'm going to talk about the marriage 
you are an individual, one individual, you are the other individual, you come under the name of God through a covenant and a settlement called marriage and two flesh become one in the Lord. And me and my wife are not one in the physical realm, but in the sight of God, we are one. That's what they call the sacrament. Sacrament is following the word of God on the natural realm, resulting and reaping the results in the spiritual realm. Amen. Hallelujah. That's called sacrament. If I drink the uh, uh, grape juice and eat the bread, I become one with the Lord in a physical way. No, but it is not on the physical realm. It is in the spiritual realm. Amen. Hallelujah. That is what the calls. So in other words, marriage means union. Hallelujah. Becoming, if you are not union in your spiritual, I mean, in your married life, you are not into marriage. I don't know how many marriages are not marriages according to the word of God. And I don't know how many families, even believers families are struggling to get into the real married life. Amen. Hallelujah. May God speak to every one of us. See, there is a time, I, I appeal to all, those who are not married, it's a wonderful time to listen to all this thing. Those who are married, it's a time for you to rectify your marriage. Amen. Hallelujah. Can I repeat that? Those who are not married, it's a wonderful time to listen to the word of God and set your marriage ahead of you. And those who are already married, listen to this message and set your married life and make it a successful for the glory of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So marriage is a sacrament. One of the three sacraments of the Bible is marriage because marriage talks about union. Hallelujah. Unition. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Now, we are, we are saying marriage is understanding the relationship between the Christ and the church are Jesus and the church. Now church is getting ready to meet whom? Jesus. Who is church? Is a bride. Who is Jesus? Is a groom. So the groom and the bride are going to meet together for eternity and to live in unison is called the wedding of the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. If you don't, because marriage is initiated and marriage is conducted and marriage is constituted by God unless you come into the length and the breadth and the idea of uh, uh, theology of God you can never be a successful marriage maybe in terms of physical life but not in terms of spiritual life amen hallelujah and especially I'm talking to the Christian community and especially I'm talking to the believers who born again baptized and walking in the light of the word of God you got to rectify your your marriages in line with the word of God so that through you God can do miracles amen hallelujah unless you are blessed unless you set an example you cannot you cannot you cannot do anything for the Lord amen hallelujah I think I'm taking time but it's important I may not finish everything but still I, I want to do what I'm doing amen hallelujah because this is knowledge and knowledge will set your life free in the name of Jesus let me compare the first marriage. Before I start with Adam and Eve, understand this way, God is an omniscient God. Amen. Hallelujah. Is it? Bible tells me in, uh, in, in Isaiah chapter 64, verse 10, even before, uh, uh, even before you, you start the beginning, you have seen the end. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I right? Is Alpha and the Omega is the beginning and end. So when he starts the beginning, he sees the end. Amen. Hallelujah. So in other words, when he started the creation of Adam and Eve, he started the end, which is ending up with the Lamb of the Wedding of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Is it making it sense? Our God he sees everything. He sees everything. Before it comes into existence, he sees, hallelujah. From the ancient time, Isaiah says, 46, from the ancient time, what is still to come, he's already seen it, amen, hallelujah. So what I'm trying to tell you is, when Adam and Eve started, God already seen the wedding of the Lamb with the church of God, amen, hallelujah. All right? And before... Human marriage 
A human wedding is a prototype of the wedding of the Lamb of God. This is what I'm explaining, right? It's a product. Your marriage is a prototype of the wedding of the Lamb. And not only that, you was, because I'm comparing with the first marriage, and I'm comparing the marriage that's going to be taking place where the church is eagerly waiting for the groom to come. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, Eve was extension of Adam. Am I right? Mm. I, I tell you, you learned so much today. You learned so much today. Eve came out of the ribs. Eve never came from the mud. Uh, last time also I told you, if you have not seen, seen my earlier messages of God-centered family. Eve was so special to God. Woman is so special in the sight of God. And woman, as I'm going to speak to you, there's so much woman to be proud of. Woman is not a, 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 a underdog. A woman is a, just put law a below. No, that's all wrong concept. God's role for woman. That's it. Man, God's role for man. It's a role we are playing. Woman is a spirit being. Man is a spirit being. When I say man, Woman, uh, male and female are in that man. Amen. Hallelujah. You get me what I'm saying? Male and female are in man. So woman is no more. I mean, woman is not a, a downtrodden uh, commodity. No, it's not in the Bible. We got to see that. And he was an extension of Adam and church was an extension of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And I'm, I'm trying to show you the relationship between these two things. Am I right? Church is, you know, when when the uh, when the uh, uh, soldiers, Roman soldier, pierced the side of God, there came the church. Amen. Hallelujah. From the side of Jesus came the church. From the side of Adam came Eve. The church is a bride. Amen. That's what Paul is saying. Jesus and his church. What he's saying? God created marriage as an example of the relationship between church and the Christ. And he was formed and brought to Adam. The same way church is being formed by the power of the Holy Ghost and, and will be brought before Jesus. That is what we call the rapture. Amen. Hallelujah. You get the similarities now? The church, Jesus, and Adam and Eve. Because you understand, I'm talking about the mystery of God. I mean, uh, uh, marriage mystery. God's mystery about marriage. And not only that, God, God gave Eve. Eve is a helper. Or Eve was a helper to Adam to accomplish the assignment. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. Always woman is given to man to accomplish an assignment. If your husband doesn't have an assignment, the woman cannot play a role. Which we come to see all those things in the latter thing. What, what I'm trying to tell you is, Eve, God gave Eve as a helper to Adam. And you know, Holy Spirit is our helper. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, we are the church, we are the Eve, we are the church, we are the bride, and the Holy Spirit is given as a helper so that we can accomplish what Jesus wants us to do on this earth. Amen. Hallelujah. You, you, you saw the similarity? Here, He was a helper to accomplish. Here, Holy Spirit is a helper for us to accomplish and to be like Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That is an assignment. And not only that, Eve is to become one with man Adam. Eve is one with Adam because she's taken out of the thing. So the same way church is one with the Lord Jesus because church was taken out of the side. So you are the church. Those who are born again and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, they become the church and you are the part and parcel of Jesus. Amen. Remember this. We are talking about the relationship of the Adam and Eve and we are talking about the relationship of Jesus and the church. Adam and Eve are the symbol of union and companionship. Am I right? 
They are the first couple and they are the symbol of the union and unison and also the companionship. You know why God created man? God created man for three reasons. One, to have a fellowship and to have companionship and also to have intimacy. Amen. Hallelujah. And these are the three reasons man always, whenever God does anything, God does for a companionship. The humanity is a companionship of God, isn't it? If that is not there, every problem comes in. All right, now, Adam and Eve are the symbol of union and companionship, and Christ and church will be the real union and companionship for eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. Our eternity is in Christ, is with Christ. Amen. Am I right? Yeah. And Eve came out of the ribs of Adam, and church came out of the sight of Jesus. All right? Church was not created but bought. Church was not created but bought by the blood of Jesus and he was not created but brought from the sight of Adam. Can you see the similarities? Unless you don't know the similarities of church, Christ and Adam and Eve, we don't understand the meaning of marriage. That's what Paul said. Husbands, love your wife. Wives, submit your husbands. Children, obey. I'm talking about the God's design in the family. You can see that. Everyone has got a role to play in the family with the different annotations. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And that is the difference between that is the difference between Jesus and the church. And that's a mystery. More than the difference I call that, it's a mystery. Church is a mystery. Church and Jesus are the mystery. Hallelujah. So now we have seen the first one. Marriage is a mystery of God. And the mystery is the church and the Lamb. Amen. Now we have come to see the second one. Marriage makes one a husband and a wife. Hebrew chapter 13 verse 4 tells me marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled but fornicators and adulterers God will judge. We got to understand every word. Fornication is different from adultery. Fornication is done between an unmarried people and adultery is done between married people or between married and unmarried people. Fornications, uh, uh, fornication, uh, what do you call, the implications are different, but the adultery, the implications are different because it is a very severe sin in the sight of God. God willing, we'll see that later. But now the thing is, marriage is honorable in all. What we are going to see, marriage makes one husband and one wife. People of God, as I said, marriage is an intimate and complementing union between a man and a woman. Marriage is between a man and a woman. That's what the Bible tells me. That's what I say. It's a very delicate and very uh, 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 cautious subject. But nevertheless, we have to preach the word of God as it is with all the love to the society and to the people who are listening to this word. Amen. Hallelujah. With no offense, with no judgment, with no condemnation, we are preaching the word of God as it is for your good and for my good. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, marriage is an intimate and complementing uh, a union between man and a woman in which two become one physically. Two people coming Physically and becoming one. Amen. Hallelujah. That is marriage. And the purpose of marriage is to reflect the relationship of Godhead. What is Godhead? God is in union with the Father and Son. Amen. Hallelujah. And they have a fellowship and they have companion. Amen. Hallelujah. So what God is trying to do is because our lives are not settled in this world, our lives are going to be taken up with the Lord for eternity. So God is teaching us to live in unison and with uh, uh, a, a, you know, a, a complete uh, uh, relationship when you are living on the earth itself. Amen. 
Is it making sense? Whatever God teaches, God teaches with an idea that you can live in heaven comfortably. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And Genesis 2.24, the Bible tells me, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Amen. They shall become one flesh. I want you to understand three words. Marriage, husband, and wife. Amen? You can become a father without a husband. Please listen carefully. This is where the prominence of the word of God. You can have Ten partners, you can have ten children, you can become a father, you can become a grandfather, you can become anything, but you can never become a husband without marriage. Am I right? The word husband is so powerful in the sight of God. That's what God used the word husband and God used the word wife. Yes, they are male and female. But nevertheless, God used a system and a wording called husband and the wife. These two words will be the result of another word called the marriage. Amen. If you're not married, you can never be called as a wife or a husband. Am I right? We can have partners. You can have children. You can become father. You can become grandfather. You can become great grandfather. But you can never become a husband unless you come into the covenant call. The wedding. The marriage. In other words, the word marriage will give you the authority into the husbandship. The word marriage will give you the authority to come into the wifeship so that you can enjoy a relationship that's worthy not in the sight of the world alone but in the sight of God. Am I clear? What is marriage? First we see. What is marriage? Marriage is a gospel issue. Isn't it? Marriage means it is a gospel issue. What is gospel? Jesus loves the world. And Jesus comes and takes you back. Amen? This is what the gospel is. So you are enacting a gospel in this world through your marriage so that people can see the love in your marriage. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I reaching you? If you're not fulfilling your marriage properly, you're bringing shame to the gospel of God, which is a mind-blowing fact for me. I didn't realize this way. If my marriage life is not successful, I'm degrading the gospel that I'm believing. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I right? Because you're enacting a wife and husband role which is reflecting the role of Jesus and the church in the future. Amen. Marriage makes gospel visible on earth. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what the marriage is. Marriage makes visible, a uh, 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 gospel visible on earth and bringing hope, love, joy to the people. Amen. Hallelujah. Marriage should bring hope. Marriage should bring joy. Marriage should bring love to make a gospel successful in your life. That means your life is a small gospel. I mean, hallelujah. A marriage is a small gospel. Oh, I never seen this way. I never seen this way. The power of marriage. The word marriage brings every, it's a, it's, it's, it's a legal entity into the face, uh, in, in, in the earth, and there's a legal entity in eternity. I mean, hallelujah. That's what we got to get married. And as, as I said, a lot of things I'm going to uh, talk, we share. It's not sex, love, and marriage. It is marriage, love, and sex. Amen. Hallelujah. Bible doesn't say, Bible doesn't teach sex, love, and marriage, but Bible teaches marriage, sex, and love. Hallelujah. Because you have every authority as a wife, you have every authority as a husband to control and to animate your life as a gospel to the nations. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are a successful married person, you are a successful person to, to propel the gospel out of your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Right? Marriage should be a sustained 
only by the power of the gospel. If you want your marriage life to be successful, you got to understand the relation between the Christ and the church. This is what the thing is. And the whole Bible, the story of God's love for his people. Amen. Hallelujah. The whole marriage is God's love story for his people. Am I right? Am I right? And when God called Israel, he did not call them Israel. He said, you are my beloved. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what he said. Why are you doing adultery with other nations? You know, when God is always whole Old Testament, when God called his people, he called them as a bride to them. Amen. Hallelujah. He wants them to be faithful to his love. He wants to be faithful to the call the Lord has given us to be a worthy wife for the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. People of God, marriage is something very, very powerful in terms of God. A successful marriage is what a person requires, not money. And I'm, I'm not saying that's not needed. Please understand the most important thing in your married life is a successful marriage. Nothing else. Whatever money you have. How many children you have, whatever they do, is all needed, but that's not as powerful as a successful marriage. Amen. Hallelujah. Now we, we saw the marriage. Marriage is becoming one with the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be. And what is husband? I want to use the word husband. You know, husband means, husband means, you know who a husband is? Husband is a male. Can I, can I? Repeat this, husband is a male who is married to a heterosexual partner. Amen? Please, with all the respect I am talking, we are not condemning, we are not uh, 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 accusing, we are not, uh, uh, what I can say, we don't have anything, we love you. If you have anything of this kind of thing, we love you. But the word of God is saying like that, I am preaching the word of God, husband is a male married to a female. Amen. That's what the Bible defines it. And uh, married to a female in the sight of God. Marriage should be always be in the sight of God. Maybe God may not see that, but because you observe that, as I said, sacrament means you're doing a physical thing, obeying the word of God, but your result is reaped in the spiritual realm. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what the marriage is. And husband means to protect. Husband means to provide. Husband means to produce. Husband means to pursue. And husband means to propel. This is my definitions. After, after I'm meditating a lot of things, I got five things. Husband is a protector. That's what the Bible tells us. And husband is a provider. That's what the Bible tells. And husband is a producer because everything he produces. Amen. Hallelujah. Eve was produced by Adam. Isn't it? Who is a production person for Eve is Adam. Amen. Hallelujah. That means he is a source of Adam. He is a giver. He is a life giver to Adam. He is everything to uh, 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 Eve. So Eve is completely of Adam. Amen. <coughs> Praise be to God's holy name. Alright. And the word husband is a word from house band. A bandi. A bondi. Whatever it is. House means house. Bondi means dwell. In other words, Husband is the in church of the household. I mean, hallelujah. The word husband in church has come from this word. Okay? And husband means to conserve resources and use them carefully. I mean, hallelujah. Husband is to conserve every kind of resource that's required for the family. And to use it properly. And that's what. And the word husband comes from a word, as I said, husband. Husbandi. House means house. Bondi means dweller. Amen. Hallelujah. So husband means he's a dweller of the house. In other words, he's in charge of the house. Amen. Hallelujah. That's word mean husband. And now meaning of wife, we see that. 
And let me tell you, the word husband came because when God created, he created the male and female and brought them and God said, never said you are a husband, you are a wife. You can ask that because it's not there in the first chapter. But in the second chapter, you see when the first word, uh, uh, husband came, Genesis chapter 3, 6, can read Genesis. So she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. The word husband came first time in the Bible in Genesis chapter 3, 6. You know, in a very wrong way it came. Amen? She gave to her husband for what? Not to obey the word of God. To disobey the word of God. We'll see the details later. But the word husband came in Genesis chapter 3, 6. And the word wife came in Genesis chapter 2, 25. And it says, Adam and his wife were both naked and left no shame. When he was referred, he was referred in the glorious state. When the man was referred, man was referred in a sinful state. Amen. Hallelujah. Am I right? They have no shame because they're living in the glory of God. And what's the meaning of wife? We'll see. A man, who is wife? A, a, a woman married and considered in relationship with a husband. That's the definition of wife. You can be a partner, but you can't be a wife. For you to be a wife, a female married to a male and living in harmony with the husband. And she is called wife. Not everybody is wife. Not everybody is wife. Unless they are married, they cannot have the designation of wife. They might have children, as I said. They might have grandchildren. They can do anything, but they don't have the designation to be called as wife unless they come into the holy matrimony. Amen? That's what I'm trying to tell you. The, the word husband and the wife is a precious designation of God himself only available to the people when they come into the holy matrimony called marriage. Am I clear? Glory be to God. And we saw, first one, marriage is a mystery of God. We saw that. And second, we saw marriage is, marriage is the one who makes husband and marriage is the one who makes one wife. So without marriage, we don't have the designations of wife and husband. Amen. Now we wanted to see something for today's quick meditation. Marriage is God's natural law. And this is a very important subject. If you understand the subject, all right? If you understand the subject, you understand what is right and what is not right. All right? I started at 12.15. Mm. This is problem. Should I continue it later or we'll go with that? Because we have a communion as well. Yeah, later yeah I think I'll, I'll explain this much better way. Because if you understand, marriage is God's natural law. If you don't understand the natural laws of God, we are ending up in failures. Not only in terms of marriage, in, in terms of your marriage life. Not only just marriage, but in every walk of your life, you have to respect the natural laws of God. If you respect the natural laws of God, you're respecting the God who created the nature. Amen. Hallelujah. When you respect the natural laws of God, you will become a powerful person. Amen. Hallelujah. In terms of uh, uh, in this world and the world to come. All right. But now today, as I said, I conclude with that. We saw today two things. Marriage is a mystery of God. If you, if you want to understand the marriage, you have to understand the mystery of God. That is, marriage is a sacrament. And the second one is, marriage is a mystery of God because it is a Christ and the church. Adam and the Eve compare to the Christ and the church. So you inculcate the values of Christ and the church in your wedding life, your marriage will be successful. And the second one we saw is the word marriage. The word husband and the word wife. You can never be a wife or a husband without you getting into the marital relationship through the holy matrimony called wedding or 
marriage and the Bible tells me the bed of the marriage is not defiled these facts I wanted to deal in so clearly so that those who are not married they will gain a lot of wisdom amen can we just conclude and keep it into the hands of the Lord amen father God we thank you for speaking to us Lord allowing us to learn the words that you have spoken into our lives so God Lord we bless you this morning Lord help us to build a, a wonderful marriage relationship to be a, a unison with one another in terms of uh, a marriage and to be having a deep fellowship and also Lord having a companionship to really make what marriage is unto us Lord. We thank you, worship you, praise you. Give you all the glory, honor and praise. In Jesus mighty name all God's people say Amen, Amen, Amen. amen, amen. God bless you. Can we just come for uh, uh, communion now? And we have a communion and then we can... Just leave it now.